He says, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Though none go with me, I still will follow. Think about that. Though none go with me, I still will follow. No turning back, no turning back. My cross I'll carry till I see Jesus. Now, what cross are you expected to carry? And this song came into existence, and I want to say this for people that are listening online or uh, may pick up this broadcast, but about 150 years ago, there was a great revival in Wales. As a result of, result of this, many missionaries came to Northeast India to spread the gospel. The region known as Assam was comprised of hundreds of tribes who were primitive and aggressive headhunters. Now you know what that is. Okay. In these hostile and aggressive communities came a group of missionaries from the American Baptist missions, spreading the message of love, peace, and hope in Jesus Christ. Naturally, they were not welcomed. One missionary succeeded in converting a man, his wife, and two children. This man's faith proved contagious, and many villagers began to accept Christianity. What do we think when we say, I have decided to follow Jesus? Because it's not you that lives anymore, it's Christ that lives through you. Angry, the village chief summoned all the villagers. He then called the family who had first converted to renounce their faith in public or face execution. Moved by the Holy Spirit, the man said, I have decided to follow Jesus. In, enraged at the refusal of the man, the chief ordered his arrowers, his archers, to arrow down the two children. Mm. As both boys lay, Twitching on the floor, the chief asked, will you deny your faith? You have lost both of your children. You will lose your wife too. But the man replied, though no one join me, still I will follow. Amen. The chief was beside himself with fury and ordered his wife to be arrowed down. In a moment, she joined her two children in death. Now, he asked for the last time, I will give you one more opportunity to deny your faith and live. In the face of death, the man said the final memorable lines, the cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back. <coughs> could we today say that? We think we could, but we haven't been faced with that situation. It's easy to shake our heads and say we can, but to be faced with a decision like that is another thing. It means how much am I willing to follow Jesus? If I have to say no to something, if, that, if I have to say I'm not going to do this because I'm going to follow him, or would we compromise to please someone else? This, when the man said, the cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back, he was shot dead like the rest of his family. Oh. But with their deaths, a miracle took place. 
the chief who had ordered the killings was moved by the faith of the man, he wondered, why should this man, his wife and two children die for a man who lived in a faraway land on another continent some 2,000 years ago? There must be some remarkable power <coughs> behind the family's faith. And I too want to taste that faith. This was the head of the headhunters, of the village of the headhunters. In a spontaneous confession of faith, he declared, I too belong to Jesus Christ. When the crowd heard this from the mouth of their chief, the whole village accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior. That was over 150 years ago. And, and at the, one of these um, papers I have when I looked it up, they said even today, 95% of the village is still saved. 95% of the village still saved. Now, when you think about the cross before me, the world behind me, or the world behind me, the cross before me, that's a lot to say. And so, today I'm teaching, my cross I'll carry till I see Jesus. What is your cross? You have to find out what your own personal cross is that you have to carry till you see Jesus. It may be, you may be by yourself the rest of your life. Everybody may depart from you. Everybody may die. Everybody may believe uh, that you're just a fanatic. But you have to determine if you're going <coughs> to pick up your cross and follow him. To carry your cross means to fully put your trust in God amid the storms and battles in your life. It means that although you may be in an extremely difficult or painful situation, you always turn to God and trust Him. Amen. You know that He is with you in the midst of your suffering. We never were promised that we wouldn't suffer. We never were promised that we were going to have everybody that started with us walk with us. That's not a promise. In Matthew 6.33, it says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. His righteousness. Not your righteousness, but his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. If you look at Miriam's message today, it's exactly where she was. Verse 34 says, take therefore no thought. Oh, no worry. I can't worry. It says, take Therefore, no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Luke's Gospel, chapter 13, 24. When we think about, I have decided to follow Jesus. What does that mean for all of us? Because I think it's a growing into revelation, knowledge, and understanding. But it means that my old life is dead. The things that I used to do are dead. It means that you come first before anybody else in my life. Ooh. What I desire may not be what he desires. What I want to do may not be what he has for me to do. Where I want to go, he may not want me to go. What I think about, it may be stinking thinking. My will should not have power over his will for my life. 
in Luke's Gospel, chapter 30, uh, 13, 24, it says, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, <clears throat> will seek to enter in and shall not be able when we were, when we came to the Lord, some of us were, got scared in the salvation. <clears throat> we were afraid because we didn't want to go to hell. That's what it was. Well, if you don't receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're going to hell. So we got scared in the salvation. But there was a deposit there. And as you went along your life, you began to conform to his image in certain ways and then certain things somebody else would say well it really doesn't take all of that for that man over 150 years ago it took the life of his two children his wife and then his own now, I'm not going to say that we would be called to that. I don't know what each one of you, what cross you're bearing. But if I'm going to pick up the cross like Jesus picked up the cross, then I'm going to be ridiculed, not understood, misunderstood, talked about, um, and in all of these things, I still have to walk in love. Yes. Yeah. What made Jesus Christ's ministry so powerful was his love for people. He loved the sinner, but he hated the sin. He didn't gossip about him with the disciples. He just went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the enemy because God was with him. He didn't tell anybody, if you don't change this, you're going to hell. He just demonstrated heaven through his life on this earth. Because he wanted to show his disciples that when you live with me and in me, nothing can hold you back. Nothing can stop you. I'll supply all of your needs. Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. They'll seek it, they'll want to, but they won't be able to because they cannot give up the trappings of this life. They cannot surrender to the will of God in a lot of areas in the life. If he says something that we can't do, we don't have the grace to do it. So that's what makes it even rough, trying to do something that there's no grace for you to do. You think about Luke, and I, when I was studying this out last night, Luke was called the beloved physician. Matthew was a tax collector. And if you look at Chosen, you begin to see Matthew in a totally different light. <laughs> Matthew's kind of like this stu studious nerd. <laughs> and he walks around with his tablet, and he's writing everything down. And, he, and he's looking, and his head's like this sometimes. And you think, he needs, somebody needs to lay hands on this young man because he got issues. But he was, he was rejected by the Jewish people because he was a tax collector. When God picked his disciples, they didn't have it all together. I, I want you to understand that. They did not have it all together. And you see him talking to them, laughing with them, and how he got their attention was he went out and spent time with the multitude, healing them, getting them delivered. 
but he came back exhausted, sometimes beaten, and his mother would clean <coughs> his wounds every night, wash his feet every night. And it got the disciples' attention, because they were silly. It got their attention as what does this take? What does this mean? We're striving to enter into the straight gate, not see how much we can get by with or what we don't have to change or need to change. It's a straight gate. And if you've been to Israel with us, we go through this narrow place. And I remember I was going, it was so narrow, if you can leave some skin on the rocks, that's how narrow it is. And I remember going through there and, I, and my bracelet had a big dim, dim in it because it was so narrow you had to kind of go sideways or something like that. This is the gate that the Lord is talking about. Strive to enter in the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able to. Why? Because they have not renounced the world. They still want things and part of the world. And you can't have them both. But I tell you this, <coughs> when you understand the grace that's afforded you, uh, it just things just begin to drop off of you. You don't have to say, well, I'm not going to do this anymore, and then lie and do it again no. two days later. You just keep moving, and all of a sudden you find out things dropped off of you that had a hold on you because you decided to follow Jesus. Amen. No turning back. Why would I want to go back to my vomit? Why would I want to turn back? No. I want to keep moving in the direction and his grace and his mercy is there to help me where I can. Where I'm weak, he's strong. Yes. So I can say, Lord, I'm weak in this area, but you're strong. And I take your strength in this area to help me because he's help he's a helper Luke was called the beloved physician close friend and companion to Paul the apostle what is your cross this morning what are you carrying my cross I carry till I see Jesus remember I believe it was Paul. Remember when Paul was asking the Lord to take this, this, this infirmity away from him? This thorn in his side. He was saying, Lord, take this away. And the Lord kept saying to him, my grace is sufficient for you. Some things he's not going to take away. Why? Because you need to keep moving in him, trusting in him, relying on him. And as you continue on, then you will understand that you have the grace to move past it. Yes. We want God to do everything for us. Lord, would you do this? Lord, do this. Lord, can you fix this? Can you handle this? Lord, can you? Um, surrender is the key that opens the door. If I don't surrender my will, my desires, my wants, if I don't surrender them to him, he can't help me because I'm still trying to make it work myself. I'm compromising. And anything I can tell you, anything that you compromise to keep, you are going to lose. Think about that.